Hello, and welcome to the Moms Who Know podcast. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen, and joining us today is Chef Rebecca Club. Rebecca, how are you today? I'm doing great, Chanel. Thank Thank you you. so much for being here. Chef Rebecca is the owner and founder of Whole Health Every Day. She studied at Laguna Culinary Arts School. She specializes in helping people meet dietary requirements through planning and preparing nutritious meals. And we're going to talk a lot about food today. We're going to talk about how she does that and how she's able to help people to meet their dietary goals. Um, She has helped pro NFL athletes with their training diets and help many of her clients eat healthier with a clean diet. Another uh, claim to fame for Chef Rebecca is that her recipes have been featured in Tana and Daniel Amon's The Brain Warrior's Way cookbooks. If you have that and you've tried some of those recipes, you may already be familiar with her recipes. Also in Brad Davidson's book, The Stark Naked 21 Day Metabolic Reset. So that is very cool. And we're so excited to have you and to hear a little bit about you. So to start us off, can you tell us a little bit about your background and some of your personal health struggles and kind of how you got into food and health? Okay, great, Chanel. Um, Yeah, so I wasn't always a chef and in the culinary business. I was um, working in an office and it wasn't until my um, mid thirties that I got very, very ill and the regular doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And they made a lot of guesses and wanted to do surgeries on my arm that hurt and my hip. And I had a lot of problems and I just really didn't believe that that's what was wrong. And I kept seeking out um, alternative medicine to help me. And I ended up with a, uh, acupuncturist and then I ended up at a holistic nutritionist and through food, I started to get better. I started to get better as I removed gluten and I removed dairy and sugar. And through that whole journey with the nutritionist and then the naturopath and, um, the other health practitioners, I, I learned that, that food really is, is, was the source of all my illnesses. And through eating correctly, I was able to get a hundred percent better. And in the meantime, I had decided to pursue my passion for cooking and go to culinary school. And it was a traditional culinary school, a lot of French cooking, a lot of dairy and gluten and everything, but I learned great techniques and I taught myself how to cook in the manner that I needed with the gluten-free and the dairy-free and substituting things. And that's how my passion for my business came to be is I realized there's other people out there like me. And I wanted to help. Yeah, You know, there are so many people out there that are struggling with health conditions that, like you said, the doctors just don't know how to help. In fact, I was at the doctor's office this morning with my daughter who's been struggling with some digestive issues and we've taken her off gluten and it's helped a little, but she's not all the way there. And the doctors just, they run their tests. And if beyond that, they kind of don't know, no slam on doctors. They're doing a wonderful work, but there are things that are really better treated by the diet, like you said. So that's very interesting to hear. Um, I have another question as you were talking, how long in changing your diet, how long did it take you to see changes in, you know, with all those physical problems you were having? Well, for me, it was a gradual change. Um, as soon as I removed the, the gluten, the dairy and the sugar, when I first saw the holistic nutritionist, um, I felt better within days, weeks, months. I mean, it was a gradual better, 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 but I didn't get a hundred percent better. I was maybe say 70% better. And then I saw, um, a naturopath and it turned out I had some, um, you know, thyroid issues and things like that. And then, um, doing the blood tests to figure out, um, food sensitivities, that was the real key was there was foods I was sensitive to that 
and it wasn't even the gluten. I'm not, I'm not even sensitive to gluten. Um, it turned out to be some other foods like eggs. Mm. And, you know, I just had never guessed. Um, yeah, that's not one that you're hearing so, about all the time that could be a culprit, although it is pretty common, right? An egg sensitivity. Right. It is. Yeah. Egg sensitive is very common. And a lot of people don't know that. And some of these um, symptoms of food sensitivities aren't so blatant. It's not a rash. It's not... Um, you're like your daughter, a digestive right. thing where, you know, your stomach hurts. It, it's more subtle and it can be like, for me, it was inflammation in my body and it was causing me such pain. There was days I couldn't move my wow. fingers. Um, I, for many months I could barely walk. I, I, I couldn't go to the grocery store anymore. That was too much of a walk for me walking into any, you know, restaurant, any establishment, I would have to look and think, oh my gosh, how many feet, how many steps is that? Because I, I can't walk that That's far. crazy. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And it was, it was really for me, it was the dairy and it was okay. the eggs. Well then tell us a little bit. So you've taken out dairy and eggs. Are you still off gluten? Um, I eat low gluten just because I believe that we all do not need to be having that much gluten and that it's really not great for our bodies. So I choose to be very okay. low gluten, um, but I'm not okay. gluten free. Yeah. I think, um, low, it seems low gluten in our society because we are a society, a culture that eats so much gluten. Um, but maybe it could be considered, you know, in other parts of the world, just a normal amount of gluten. But yeah, here, if you're not having gluten every meal, you're pretty much low gluten. Um, so tell us then, so th there are a few things you avoid. What is your personal food philosophy, kind of what you eat on a regular basis and you know, your reasoning behind that? Well, you know, we work with so many different clients and so many different diets. Um, but me personally, from all these nutritionists we work with and we see these different diets, what I believe is just going without processed foods, just eat whole foods. I, you know, I, I eat meat and I eat vegetables, I eat fruits, I eat nuts. Um, but I try to really not have processed foods. I, I make things from scratch myself. There are times I had some crackers a little while ago. They were made from almonds and cassava and, you know, they were wonderful gluten-free crackers and they're delicious, but it's, you know, it's made from three ingredients. Right. <laughs> yes. A little different <laughs> than the kind of processed food that, that we usually think of when we think of processed food, just a convenient food yes, that's exactly. not that processed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's, you know, if, if you've heard when you go to the grocery store, you should shop around the perimeter, not down up and down right. the aisles. And that's, you know, that, that's really how, how uh, I think a person should eat because it's just, it's all the processed stuff is. Okay. I totally agree with that. I am all about the whole food and sometimes it is hard with kids. So I'm a mom of five and, um, and yeah, <laughs> sometimes that's hard and sometimes it's expensive and all those things, but so worth it. And my kids have learned to embrace it, if not love it, because that's what we do. So, um, Okay. Well, very cool. Well, tell us more about the business aspect of what you do. You have a beautiful website and um, many different services. So kind of talk us through what your business is all about. Okay. So what we do mainly is we're an in-home private chef service and we're in LA, Orange County, Riverside and Southern California. And we're also in um, Scottsdale, Arizona area. And so for that service, we um, go into the client's home and do meal prep, really. Uh, somebody will want the chef to come once, twice, or three times a week and have just a whole bunch of food prepared, stock up the fridge, so that when people like yourself, that's a busy mom, just people busy in their day, they have this great fresh food to go to and they don't reach for, for frozen processed food. They don't stop for fast food. They have all this wonderful food stocked up in their fridge. 
So that service is quite popular. Um, Let me just interrupt for a second. That is so cool. So Rebecca and I were talking before the call and I was saying that is like one of those things you see, like, would you rather have a a maid come and live with you? Would you rather not have to do laundry every day? Or would you rather have a chef come in your house and cook meals? So she is making the dream possible, you guys. That is so cool. Um, And also I'll, I'll just interject here. Um, some of us like myself, who is a stay at home mom have more time than we have money. Some of us, I imagine who are working moms are the opposite. They have money and they are so short on time. And so to have a service like that, to be able to have healthy food for your family, that's amazing to not have to rely on fast food. That's just such a cool service that you provide. So go on. I just wanted to add that in there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you know, for busy moms like yourself that um, can't um, hire a chef to come in or we're not in your area, we do offer help with just your menu planning and walking you through how would you do this for yourself. And we would provide recipes, the grocery list. So we would talk through a plan for you and say, okay, what is your family like and what are your needs? And And then you would block off a time during your week and do your food prep, get a babysitter, you know, get, get that time blocked off so that you can spend four or five hours in the kitchen and, and knock it all out and stock your own fridge. And we can help with that process as well. That's so cool. I think that would be so helpful for a lot of people because a lot of times it's in the planning that we fall short because if you have it planned, if you, if on a Saturday or whenever you've done your shopping and you have all your meals planned out and ready to go, then on Wednesday night, no problem. You're going to know what to feed your family. But if you're scrambling at the last minute, that's when you turn to the fast food. It, you, you haven't thought anything, you haven't prepped anything, and you have hungry kids to feed. So it's a whole different story if you have that prepped. And I think a lot of people don't have that knowledge, don't even know how to start right. something like that. Yeah. And even, you know, some people, they, they get their grocery shopping done on the weekend and they think, okay, this week's going to be better. And then the kid has a late night Mm -hmm. baseball game and you're not home till eight o'clock anyways. And then you just say, forget it, you know, order a pizza. (laughs) Yeah. And and the produce gets thrown away and yeah, you hope for a better week next week. I've, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard the the joke that, you know, I'm at the grocery store on Sunday picking out the produce. Yes, I think a lot of people are in that (laughs) cycle because, yeah, because life gets so busy. Right. So the key to it is prepping it. And so we can we can help whether we're prepping it for you or whether we're teaching you how to do the prep work yourself and make your week easier. So then the other services we offer is um, custom Um, recipe planning, which is part of that, where if you did a service like mine and just wanted the information, we would come up with custom recipes just for you. Because you may say, we love, um, we love lasagna, but we don't want the noodles. We don't want, you know, whatever it is, there's going to be substitutions, changes due to your allergies your likes and dislikes, and we would come up with custom recipes for you so so that you know how to prepare the foods that are going to fit into your That's life. That's very cool. There's lots of uh, helpful things in there that can be really useful. That's so cool. Um, now, when you're creating these recipes, do you have a specific diet that you recommend? Like if people just say, okay, I just, I want to be healthy. Do, do you ever get that comment? Do people come to you and say, I just want to be healthy, just cook something healthy? Yeah. So some people come to us and they have a specific diet. They might hand us a book and say, I want to follow this book. Or I saw, you know, Susie, the nutritionist, and I want to follow her plan. And then others say they just want to be healthier. But then what we do is we sit down with them and I meet with every new client and the chef and we go over the likes and dislikes and the needs. So it's a matter of asking the client, what do you define as Mm. healthy? You come to me and say healthy, but what do you mean by healthy? And some people, what that means is changing to all organic. 
for some people, it means going gluten free. Um, so it, it's it, every person's different. We, we just have to ask them what they mean and then we can go from there. Okay. That makes sense. Now, if ever, I mean, most people have some general idea of health and I guess that the people who are coming to you are mostly going to line up with your food philosophy because you're saying real food and you're cooking from scratch. So it kind of goes together. Are there any, right. are there ever any times that you run into like a moral issue of people wanting something like say sugar, you've said, you know, you personally don't eat sugar and they say, well, I want to be healthy, but I sure like my chocolate cake. So can you make sure I, I have that every day kind of thing? Are there any other ever, are there ever any issues where you have to kind of compromise what you believe to get the client what they want? Or is that not really an issue? Yeah. It, well, it does happen sometimes. I mean, as for the sugar, I mean, if, Someone's asking for a lot of sweets and that, you know, I might have my own um, thoughts in my right. head about it. But, um, <laughs> and I, I may, you know, if they ask my opinion, I'll try to educate okay. them on that. You know, especially when somebody says they have a health condition, you know, like diabetes, and then I point out to them if they're not working with a doctor. Right. You know, first, first and foremost, I ask if they're working with someone, if they are not working with someone, then I'll offer my opinion and kind of feel out if they really want to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to be careful. Yes. And, it, and at the end of the day, I mean, it is a business. You have to do what they want, but yeah. Yeah. Right. So I try, you know, I, I don't ever want to step on a doctor's toes or nutritionist and, and we're going to zip our mouths, all of us chefs, we zip it if, if they're working with someone. Um, but we, I do give people educational stuff that do want it. So I do have a document I'll give clients that don't really know health and they are asking for my opinion. Um, and this document lists out, um, sugar substitutions to use and the, you know, what really is sugar in your body, you know, all that wheat, um, you know, turns to really sugar in your body. Alcohol does all of that sugar. And then I go into the oils. That's a hot topic for me is, is people going into their kitchens and seeing them still using canola oil. So I really try to educate people on the oils, especially if the chef's going to be cooking in there because my chefs don't want to purchase those cheap mm. oils um, and they're harmful. Right. And if the client insists on using it, you know, there's, there, you know, like you said, there's nothing we can do. We're going to do what they want to do, but I'm going to give them my two cents and feel out if they really want yes. to Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that a lot of people don't actually know that about canola oil. I, I think it's getting there, but I think still in the mainstream, still in magazines, you still see that. And so people still think, well, that's healthier. You know, it says heart healthy right on the bottle. Um, so yeah, there's still, I think that's cool that you're offering Whatever education that people are ready for, <laughs> sounds like. <laughs> Whatever level yes, they, yes. they want. Yeah, so I give them this document with various information, and that document I give them has recommended uh, videos to watch, you know, all the movies that have been made um, about health and, and um, you know, the super size it and all those kind of things. I, I'll i recommend they, they look at that, and I'll recommend the books like Wheat Belly and, and things like that. Um, and I post things on my Facebook page. So they get the level of education they yes. want. Um, but at the end of the day, we're, we're going to cook for them as, as they, they want. That's why we ask there the questions go. of which oils do you want to use? And, and it's just it's part of the conversation of the initial. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's good. Um, let's, so there was something really cool on your website that I enjoyed watching. It was, um, a grouping of superfoods videos that you did with Christy, holistically yes. Christy. Is that? Yes. Yes. Holistically yes. Christy. And, um, those were really fun. And I recommend that everyone who's listening, go and check those out because they're these cute little free, um, cooking demos and recipes and things that you can learn. So will you talk to us a little about, about those kind of what's your favorite and, um, what, recipe or what superfoods you enjoyed cooking with in those videos kind of talk us through those 
Okay. So um, holistically, Christy, Christy Acuna had come to me and asked if I would do this series with her. And she's a holistic nutritionist. And she said she came up with her list of superfoods and wanted me to come up with a recipe for each one. So that part is super fun for me. I love working with, you know, on the books and on the videos when people come to me and, and, you know, just give me a product and say, okay, now come up with a recipe. So all of that was super fun. Now I really did like coming up with the recipes for like the kombucha and the bone broth because I had not made oh. those before. And so, you know, the bone broth is this new buzzword around, yes. you know, culinary now. And most of us chefs, you know, thought at first like bone broth, it's all bone broth. What are you talking about? <laughs> All broth is bone broth. So um, I got to do a little more research on that and see what um, they were defining as um, broth versus stock versus Okay, versus hydrolyzed soy protein that you find in the store, right? (laughs) Right, Right. you know, there's always like the latest culinary buzzword. And the kombucha was fun um, because I had not worked with that before. And, you know, you ferment it on the counter. It's fermented tea, so... So that was interesting. Um, and the sauerkraut I made that one is that's probably my favorite product I came okay. up with on here because I still make my red sauerkraut to this day since making these How videos. Fun. Batch after batch. That looked fun. I saw and, uh, I watched that video and I'm like, oh, I, I do make my own sauerkraut, but I have never made it with red cabbage. And yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. It's delicious. And you know, the fermented sauerkraut like that, that's great for digestion. Yes. So if you can get your yes. daughter to eat that, that would be a good thing. <laughs> for sure. And the, um, you know, I think the most controversial one of the videos that I get so many comments on is the lard. Mm-hmm. Superfood number one. I get so many people when they call me about services and they say, well, I saw that video, but I don't know about you (laughs) cooking with lard. (laughs) I don't know about the lard. Do you have any canola oil for me? Yeah. (laughs) Right. Right. So there's a little education to begin with where I explain to them why why lard is good. Yes. And it is a pure animal fat, and that's much better for you than the processed oil. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that, because I bet there are plenty of listeners that are probably going to be saying, wait, what? I've never heard that lard is good for you. (laughs) Well, you know, that's what people used to cook with. And, and that was a good thing. It's, you know, it's, it's, um, animal fat and that's all it is. Right. It's animal fat, period. It's, and, um, the nutritionists now are saying that the, you know, the animal fat is good for your body. It's a good fat. And the processed oils is what's so bad for you. It's the way they process them. So going back to lard, you know, it, it's, it's not a bad thing. And by the way, lard will make you the flakiest pie crust. Mm-hmm. So. It does for sure. Yeah. I, I actually cook with lard. I, when I can get it, because we're not talking this farmer John stuff they sell at the grocery store, right? It's more of like a, what I use anyway is lard that I've made myself from, um, a good quality source of pork. So it's a little bit hard to acquire or is, is that the kind you can get at the grocery store any good? Well, you know, I think um, Whole Foods is selling lard lard okay. now, and I believe Sprouts does. And if you're in Orange County, California, there is um, a place that sells it, the fermentation farm. So you can find some local sources, find some um, places that are selling good quality meats. Yeah. And they may have that kind of Okay, product. very cool. Well, that's a great tip. Um, we are almost out of time. What other tips do you have for busy moms who want to eat healthy and maybe are not quite ready to afford their own, uh, to pay for their own personal chef to come in? Um, what would you recommend for moms who are just feeling overwhelmed and, but want to do better? You know, I would just really think about doing that, that meal prep once a week. You buy all those great vegetables we talked about, all that fresh produce, get it washed, 
Don't even put it away when you get home. Wash it, chop it, put it in containers ready to use, even if you're not going to cook it. Have it chopped up and ready to quickly saute on a Wednesday night when it's, you know, late after soccer practice. Um, that meat, you know, make some, make some nice homemade chicken tenders. You can, you can use some nice gluten-free panko or an almond crust, throw them in the freezer, have them ready to pull out. You've got to just think ahead. And, and, and that's the bottom line is prioritizing some time each week to get that. I done. love that. I think that's so good. And, um, there is a recipe for your homemade chicken tenders on your website, right? Yes, it's one of the superfood videos. Yes, so tell us uh, where to go so we can get your recipes, your book, and use any of your services and check out those videos. Okay, great. It's at wholehealtheveryday.com. Okay, wholehealtheveryday.com. And Rebecca, thank you so much for being with us today. I think we've learned a lot and you have so much to offer. Your clients are very lucky to have you and the rest of us are lucky to have you to be able to learn all this great stuff. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chanel. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye-bye.